Yeah, unfortunately, probably the title now is not that uh, sexy as Tintin. Uh, so uh, it is um, Bio Oscar. So probably not the title, but uh, the more the device. Evaluation of standard of care practices for the treatment of infra infrainguinal artery lesions. My disclosure. So what are our unmet needs uh, today? Well, we know that uh, sometimes we have an insufficient uh, lesion-specific approach. We have a lot of materials, but the versatility of the materials is extremely low, what is creating uh, long procedures, more radiation, and last but not least, higher costs. And probably with a multifunctional device, as the OSCAR device of Biotronic, uh, there is one solution, crossing, adjusting, and restoring all in one. And so what is creating probably a more lesion-tailored approach, less materials uh, using during the procedure, lower cost, less radiation, and lesser, uh, less exchanges um, with shorter procedures. So that's actually the storyline, that's the marketing line. But of course, we would like to know if this is also close to the reality, if this is scientifically uh, proven. And so we need to combine both, and we need to ask questions, yeah, but wait a moment, before we are investigating all these safeties and efficacies of the, bio, of the OSCAR uh, device, we need to compare with, with procedures without OSCAR. And then we looked at the literature, but it was very unclear. There were clearly no data available uh, to see the standard of care, let's say. So before we are studying, evaluating the BU Oscar first, what we started very recently, we need to know a kind of a standard of care BU Oscar. And that's exactly the, uh, uh, the topic of uh, uh, this talk. You see that eight countries, a lot of centers were uh, gathering, collecting uh, all kind of data related to the standard of care of uh, 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 procedures, which kind of procedures, as you see there, so 247 subjects were enrolled in this analysis, uh, 150 in the above the knee, 69 in the below the knee area, and then 27 also a combination of above the knee and below the knee. Because this is blurring a little bit the results, above the knee, below the knee, we are just focusing on these two cohorts, and here you see some of the uh, uh, demographics, uh, nothing special. Quite clear is that you have more smokers in the above the knee than in the below the knee, and more diabetes, uh, vice versa. If we are looking at the Rutherford, also there in light blue, you see the above the knee, more Claudicans, Rutherford 3, some Rutherford 4 and 5, but in the uh, below the knee, the vast majority was Rutherford 4 and 5, and some Rutherford 6 categories. If we are looking at the lesion characteristics, so here you see very clear uh, that uh, not the most easy lesions were uh, uh, enrolled, uh, as we see. Uh, a lot of task C and D lesions, mean lesion length around 15, 16 centimeter, and in uh, 60, 58 percent of the cases, chronic total occlusions. So the procedural success rate uh, in general, standard of care, was defined as successful crossing and residual stenosis uh, after uh, vessel preparation without major complications. Here you see overall above the knee 50 percent, 63 for stenosis, 45 for occlusions, and 59% procedural success rate um, in the below the knee area. Of course, this is a kind of combined uh, 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 ratio, uh, crossing on one side, prepping on the other side. If we pull this out and just looking at crossing, so you see that, uh, of course, in terms of stenosis, it is extremely high, but also we are doing a great job as interventionalists in passing the lesion uh, for CTOs, as you can see there, slightly better above the knee than below the knee. All the devices that were used were summarized over there, majority uh, guide wire, escalation of guide wires, and supporting uh, catheters. If we are looking at the second uh, uh, composite of the uh, endpoint there, prepping, well, here you see that there is room for improvement. Uh, clearly, in above the knee lesions, we only reach in 65, 48%, depending stenosis occlusions, uh, the residual stenosis of less than 30%, uh, percent, and uh, the same for below the knee. If we are looking at the diameter of stenosis uh, post-vessel prep, there there is some improvement, but still 
34% and 30% uh, stenosis after the vessel prep. So also there room for improvement. Do we need to select better vessel preparation tools, like uh, Michael showed very clear, better strategies, or is it okay with vessel prep and do we add the, the, the definitive treatment to overcome this kind of uh, uh, problem? The devices that are used are summarized over here, depending on the different countries. And you see that some countries, uh, countries are using more devices than some other countries, uh, countries. Of course, the complexity of the procedure is also clearly reflected there in this amount of materials, clearly reflected also in the cost analysis and some mean average device costs over the countries were uh, counted over here, but you see clearly that for the most complex lesions, the higher the price uh, uh, to do the procedure. So now we have a bunch of data available in this BioOscar SOC uh, that we can compare with the BioOscar results that we are today uh, collecting. We notice that the crossing success is already a success rate uh, in our hands. Vessel preparation is still insufficient, and the more complex lesions, the more expensive passing and prepping is. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Kuhn.